What is happening people, I am BA back once again with another reaction in the Wire series. We have reached series 2 and this is episode 1 and it is called Ebb Tide. I've been told this season switches up, I've managed to remain spoiler free. I don't know how this season switches up, I don't know how it's going to be different from the first one. All I know is, I hope it's not too different because season 1 ended with people getting scattered all over the place. We got McNulty. Fishing salmon over there. We got Bunk and Lester seeming to be still detectives, maybe working as a two pair now. We got the cop with the angel statue walking the beat. D'Angelo and Avon both doing prison terms 7 and 20. Probably get reduced, but still, that's long. I reckon maybe Avon will be out after two or three. D'Angelo though, how the fuck's he gonna get out before like 10, 15 or something? I swear the judge even said no less than 15. So how the fuck is D'Angelo ever getting out of that? Kima started to make a recovery by the end of that season as well, but we never really got to see her back on her feet. A lot of unanswered questions. A lot of unanswered questions going into this season. So we'll just have to go with it and see where it takes it. I'm bracing myself for the bad season because of what everybody said, but I mean, I don't need explosions and shit every five minutes to be entertained. I mean, as long as it's good, I'll like it. So without further ado, we are keeping on rolling. Let's fucking go. This has got to be McNulty. Freezing my balls off. Uh, like in a hat, bro. It looks like he's just walked onto the set of Fargo. 76, 72, go ahead. Distress call for a private craft. 60 foot white vessel. Engines are dead. What's the location, City White? Damn. Once upon a time, that building made things that had purpose. Now, its only purpose is to follow someone's fucking head. And until then, allow nice sleeping quarters for the homeless, and graffiti artists, and serial killers. Okay. At the end of last season, I said, like, I wouldn't mind this shit. I will say, it will be fucking cold, and they'll probably have to, like, start their shift at 5am. I love getting on a cold, slippy boat at 5 a.m. Aside from that, the fishing life always seemed chill to me. Party boat? Pretty one, yeah. More than one engine on it, right? Probably an electrical problem. <laughs> oh, we got some dignitaries on a little private boat. <laughs> and I don't recognize any of them. Fuck these guys, where's the people I remember? You know you're a fucking prick when your boat's called Capital Gains. Some Wall Street breaders. If I was McNulty, I'd just anchor the side of that shit and sink it. Any chance you can hold off on bringing us in? A lot of party going on now and I wouldn't want to cut it short for a little engine trouble. Corner cutting as soon as the season starts. You tow us somewhere out of the way and ban place on a while longer. McNulty's now accepting cash bribes for little tolls and shit. I wonder what the um, wage difference is between our murder detective and marine police. I would assume that they're not making the same wage. McNulty's probably a bit broker than he was last season. When you walk to the garden! I was about to say, don't change your fucking theme on me, Wire. It took me about five episodes to get into that song. Was this the remix, yeah? We're getting Buster Rhymes in the middle verse before the chorus comes back in. As long as we're still focusing on the heroin dealers and all that, I'll still enjoy this shit. Like Stringer Bell, I would, I would, I'll be fine with a season with Stringer Bell running shit. Stringer Bell's a G. He'll probably run shit like slicker than Avon, which is no disrespect to Avon, he's a good Don, but he was only such a good Don because he had such a good advisor in Stringer Bell. It's like in The Sopranos when uh, Tony gets wounded and Silvio took over. You're not mad at Silvio taking over because you know he's going to do a good fucking job. Down in the hole. Okay, I will say I prefer season one theme just now. I'm telling you, I didn't even want to be a police anymore. I honestly didn't. Oh, Prez Belusky. I was thinking, oh, you know, narcotics maybe. Major, you want this stuff where? Uh, just in here and here, uh, up against the wall over there. Two out of these three characters I've never met before. Where's my familiarity? I feel change. I mean, with this Barksdale thing, Lester Freeman had us deep into the money, real deep. We could have seized real estate, cash, vehicles, all kind of stuff. If the bosses, I mean, if command had let that case go forward. If Prez Belusky's learned anything from season one, it's to not discuss these sort of things with any kind of superior who sits behind a desk. Don't talk about what you're doing to people behind desks higher up in the building. Is a general good rule in this show. Because I'm your father-in-law, you're going to be assigned a daytime shift in a quiet sector. 
Then you're going to take the lieutenant's exam where you'll also school high. The corruption straight away. He basically told him he was fast-tracking him to lieutenant. Listen to me. You did good with the drug thing. I do actually think we briefly saw this guy in the first season, by the way. Maybe I'm wrong. You ain't never heard a radio station outside of Baltimore? I mean, I ain't never left Baltimore except that boys village shit one day and I wasn't trying to hear no radio up in that bitch. That's how it is for a lot of people from the ends. They just, that's their, that's their whole world, their whole life. Also, I wonder why Preston's heading to Philly. <laughs> Who that guy is. Uh-huh. Someone's watching whatever the fuck Preston's doing. No idea what that was he was writing down on that paper. Definitely being followed by whoever's in that 4x4 though. Ahoy matey. Oh the shit. Girls are always telling me about the little man in the boat. Now I know who they're talking about. Bunk's showing up looking fly now he's got the little hat on as well. 1920s mobster bunk. Gang case is coming up four weeks. She wants to start doing preliminaries on our witnesses so that means the old lady from the projects which is no problem. And your man Omar who's in the wind. So Gant, he was the uh, the working man. That's port, fool. How the fuck would you know? Come on. Let me buy you lunch. We can think on this shit together. I wonder what Bunk makes of all this, like, McNulty being demoted to this job. Like, surely McNulty is way overqualified to be towing party boats. You get a hundred ships right there. That's break bulk, Nat. Best you're gonna do is one or two extra gangs a week on them blowers, and that's six or seven man gangs at best. Yeah, but you try for that, you might actually come away with something. Are we getting to see boat politics this season? As long as McNulty at one point arrests a fish, I'm down. Goddamn. Checkers local always acting like you're the king of everything and shit. Nat, Nat, listen to me. If we Y'all can- need to crawl back down in them holes. Remind yourself of who you is and where you come from. Is this a guy, like, standing up against the dock union, maybe? And shriveled dick motherfucker that you are, you take it. For your information, I wake up every morning with an angry blue vein diamond cutter. Diamond cutter. Blue steel, gentlemen. <laughs> For Christ's sake. Three and a half inches of hard blue steel. <laughs> this guy looks so proud of his half penis. But it's not the size of the boat, it's the motion in the ocean. And as a fisherman, I'm sure he said that more than once. So I think this may be a bit of like dock crime going on this season. Is Bunk gonna get involved in the dock corruption with McNulty? Is McNulty gonna pull all these guys into the dock corruption? Go see the Greek and get a number. He's got one on the way. Today? Tomorrow. The Atlantic Light over at North Point. So there is definitely some dock corruption going on. Ain't a problem, Chief. Fuck it ain't. I'm down here since 8 for Crane to Chassis, and Tweety Bird here lost the can. It ain't lost! There is a lot of potential for crime in import and export. I could see why this would be an uh, interesting focal point. In that case, it's definitely somewhere in the stacks. It's definitely somewhere in the stack. That's like the worst thing you would want to hear in a dock full of cargo containers. Get fired. Later for you, goofus. fucking guy. He loses his job and he couldn't care less. He ain't fired, man. No? That's his father. The privilege. We're getting special privileges in the police force with Prez Belusky and special privileges in the docks with that guy and his dad. Hey, Daniels. I, uh, I heard they posted you down here, but I mean, you know, damn. Daniels has been demoted down into the... I don't even know what that is. Some sort of filing room. Evidence room. No evidence. What do you mean, no evidence? Submission slip says row double B, section 14, shelf 3. Four right rear. It says that. So? There's clearly someone in the department erasing the evidence from the cases. That's fucked. Surely that's not Daniels. The, your first thought would be that that's Daniels because he now works there. It's just strange though. Because that happened before he worked there, that evidence got logged there. In a fake thing that didn't exist. They're here. 
these have got to be the new undercover cops. Do you know how I know? Because they're parked directly across from the targets they are surveilling. Panos, you made it. Hey, Father, got you covered here. Come on, Pani. So straight away, we've got some sort of corruption from the dock to the church, and the evidence is going missing. This season, I find it's already interesting. I don't care it's not the exact same. Germans are hard-headed, but you can't beat them for craft. And we was glad to do it, Father, for the church, you know. That's a bit stereotypical. I like to think the Germans are quite easy going, but shit at art. We got nothing but problems, Father. We need to see something happen with the C&D canal and the grain repair's been down for a year now. I got tough guys coming in to confess things I never heard before. I don't need you to tell me how bad things are at the docks. Gotta love the church. Always taking money. All money is good in the eyes of God. Yo, you see, we ain't take shit up off this cup. Yeah, yeah, You see, right. well, well, who gonna believe us, huh? This shit is missing. And fuck what you saying. That's all he gonna hear is that this shit is fucking missing. So he must not be um, selling heroin just now then if he's worried about just boosting a car and bringing it to a chop shop to get stripped. Not sure if this guy's a cop yet. I was joking about him parking across, but it could well be like the new undercovers, like tracking people like Preston and, sh and shit from the terraces. Be here all night. Right again. So that's overtime, right? Right again. I still cannot tell you. Hey, Kima. Oh no, Hawk. No, seriously, if white boys want to sell drugs in Baltimore, I have to make different laws for it. Like even it out for Affirmative action. <laughs> Leave no white man behind. That's hilarious. Like, the white guys are so shit at dealing, they want to make it more fair. You want the property, do the paperwork. You gotta step up, Herc. You don't have me or Carver to lean on here. No. Ah, uh, so, Kima's uh, got a desk job now. Is, is she, she's a detective, but she's just behind the desk, so I take it she just does a lot of paperwork and works cases from there. I can see why she would uh, have developed such a complex for street work, and on top of that, even if she hasn't developed a complex, you know her girlfriend will have pressured her to not do any more street work like that. So... Bunkin' Minotti drinking in a bar. Some things never change. This season will be fine as long as we get shit like this. Where we find Omar? Who? Oh, you remember Omar McNulty. How he say it? You know, he just said it. What is this operation that Preston has got himself involved with? It doesn't seem like it'll be much money. Hey, string a bell. Watching over the money counter. Ah. At the end of season one, this is what they decided would be their new base of operations. Shit is fucked up. Hey, I, look, I you know. You follow directions? I did, just you like you told You wrote down the mileage? Yeah, yeah. Let me see. See, right there. Was this meant to be a drug pickup in that car that wasn't there? Mmm. You know, you three tenths of a mile long, dog. Yo. And if you followed directions, you wouldn't be. Three tenths of a mile long. String a bell is not fucking about. You hurt your foot? My foot? Not the way you kicked that tire jack the way you did. He fucking knows everything. He was on us the whole time? Oh, me? Y'all had people following us? So that was Stringer's guys following Preston. Wow. See what I mean? Stringer Bell is like the ultimate cautious dude. He is taking no half measures. That just shows in an instant how clever he is. Which is quite interesting because I thought Stringer's guys were under covers. Which shows how professional Stringer's guys are. They might even be private detectives or some shit that just work for Stringer. Drink whiskey through a fire hole. Oh, so fuck their wives silly till breakfast. They were some fucking heroes back then. Shit is sick in here tonight, You got to unwind after the hard day's work on the docks. Well, you know, I do one arm after a 300 pound bag of Polish dildos fell on me. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What the fuck is a Polish dildo? Yeah, what is a Polish dildo? Do Poland have their own signature dildo I'm unaware of? Some Polish guy in the comments. Ah, you have never heard of the pain hammer. Shit. 
<laughs> These guys don't get as many jokes as uh, McNulty and Bunk when they drink. Oh my god, mate, don't pull your fucking dick out without warning us all. Is that the cue for a good tune, yeah? Yeah, he's pulled his cock out, cue the fucking music! Live band fucking loved that flash. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it does look like a fun place to kick it after a hard day's work on the docks. I wonder if it's a dockside bar as well. That'd be quite a, a gangster little shindig. You don't, you surely you don't call something dockside just a bar or a pub. It's a happening. It's a shindig. These must be guys we're gonna be seeing quite a lot this season. They wouldn't dwell on these dock workers and their personal lives just chilling with no uh, advance to the story if they weren't trying to let us get to know the characters. Now, I've seen people at the park with claws like that for packets of crisps and sweet wrappers, but never the human dead. What do you mean? Well, how long do you think she's been in? Uh, she's fresh. Legs are broke, though. Probably a jumper from the bridge. I wonder if that's a common thing that boat police have to deal with. Floating bodies. Your father says the top of the line is in today. That makes two ships at North Point. Hold tight, that guy's socks just occupying the bottom uh, left frame now for a good 30 seconds. Dock socks. 127 AAA is quite a gangster license plate. The car, however, has seen its best days. How much do them dock boys offer for this spot? I can match it. Offerings are confidential, Stan. And as you can see, we already I can go as high as 4,000. Just tell me if they went higher than four. More than four. Fucking playing politics for a church stained glass window. This is hilariously petty. Maybe you talk to Frank. Work it out somehow. Oh yeah, we'll talk. I actually like this storyline. It's ridiculous in its pettiness, but that makes it hilarious. Like, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be quite a serious issue, but it's over a fucking stained glass window at a church. It's your wish, huh? Jumper, probably. It's close to the bridge. Rest in peace to that poor individual, however they died. Going to men's room this morning, guess who's in the stall next to me puking his guts out? Bunk Moreland. How'd you know? Useless fuck can't hold his liquor. <laughs> <laughs> For a guy that can't hold his liquor, Bunk drinks a lot. Hey! I was hoping we would get to see Avon. Avon the Don Barksdale. So what's up? You ain't heard from Roberto yet? Not a goddamn word, man. Really? Still got our money though, right? So you need to get down to New York, man. What kind of game this nigga playing? They gotta be so careful having these conversations in prison. So when you go holler at a man, take it light, but be firm. They got our money and we ain't got the product. So, you feel me? The shit ain't right. So they know it's on the uh, deliverer's side, not any of his people. That's cool. Because Preston did, didn't do anything wrong. He did a few minor things, but he definitely didn't take the fucking stash that was meant to be in that car. If that's what it was. You just getting up now, fuckface? No, actually, your mom makes pretty good breakfast. No fucking way. Bacon eggs, baby! <laughs> Going down to see the Greek, right? Is this the new Bubbles? Shit, you're Russian, right? No, Ukraine. Kiev is Ukraine. Yeah, it's the same difference, though. Wow, don't say that to a Ukrainian. That'd be like saying to a Scottish person there's no difference between Scotland and England. That's a huge no-no. You want some coffee? Bye. Nah, I'm good. A actually, what kind of pie you got? Hey, Zig. Shut the fuck up, huh? <laughs> yeah, this guy needs to shut the fuck up. Frank's kid, huh? Yeah. He's in the Union, you know, but he's... Like an L series, so you ain't getting many hours. So it is some union dock shit. So we're getting some union dock shit mixed with some police shit over some church window shit and some missing evidence shit and some Avon on the phone in prison shit. I don't know why people didn't like this season. I like this setup. Can you trust a man? You stay with him. Okay. Alright. Boris, it is. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Yeah, whatever. That guy at that table, the Greek, he seems like perhaps one of the most uh, powerful people down at the docks. Fucking embarrass me in there, man. 
You embarrassed yourself, Zig. Zig did embarrass himself. There is a time and a place for banter and a time when you can detect the vibe and the room is to, you know, shut the fuck up and take things serious. Hey, darling. Just so I can finish my paperwork early, what exactly are you people going to be stealing today? I don't know. A couple luxury sedans, some color TVs, widescreen. I don't know if she was joking or if uh, she's just corrupt and accepts that they're going to do that. Did say anything else? No, just that it's the same money to us. Go. All right, Uncle Frank. I don't know what to make of these two guys yet. I mean, obviously we've just met them, but that Ziggy guy seems like an absolute idiot. So if they're conducting any serious shit, I would say don't bring Ziggy. I told him where you didn't want to go. Exactly. Yeah, and they sent me there. I, I knew Rawls was pissed. I didn't know how pissed. He told him. He told Rawls. But she went off the bridge, so. Also, she's in the drink with no coat or shoes on. Now maybe that stuff comes off in the water, but maybe not. And I don't see her making her way out to the Key Bridge in winter dressed like she was. But then that's just me. Yeah, McNulty should be in this department doing his job as a fucking murder detective. But yeah, what can you do? You're out there towing boats, bro. <laughs> it's all about self-preservation, Jimmy. It's something you never learned. Yeah, unfortunately true. I mean, there's a reason why that guy's still in the office chilling like he always has been and Jimmy is waking up at five and getting on a cold boat. But then it's arguable who's the better detective out of the two of those guys. Do you know what I mean? Jimmy gets shit done. He just gets shit done in a way that his superiors do not like him doing. Well, you know, usually when you take a fall, you get right back in there because you know nobody's watching, right? Sometimes. And sometimes you wonder how it is you got caught in the first place. And you decide to change the pattern. Completely agree with what that guy's saying. He was the first to know that we took a hit. He knows no one came close to rolling over. I sent all the documents from the case. Nonetheless, we have a legitimate concern. Stringer Bell knows everything. I don't even care where they're getting this shit from. They might even be dealing with cartels, but don't fuck with Stringer Bell cartel, guys. But if the possibility exists that the leniency he received was the result of cooperation well you understand our position that was a good meeting of the minds i really liked that scene i love the way stringer bell's written and also portrayed by idris elba he's so internalized he says everything with his looks and shit but you can tell his brain's just working overtime doing all the math nicky what the fuck it's still sitting here shit. yeah Where's he's parked at the end of the lot I got no fucking idea, but the ship's almost empty. They need the shit or get off the pot. They're setting this guy up to be quite a likable guy. Why do I get the feeling that this guy is going to be the dot worker that's going to get killed? This McNulty doing a little bit of private detective work on this uh, body. Again, he better be careful. I don't know if this is overstepping his mark or not, but it's doing that. They got him as boat police to begin with. But it is good to see McNulty doing something he's good at. I ain't lying when I say this paperwork is kicking my ass. Maybe so, but at the end of the day, you come through the door in one piece. So I thought so. Imposed by her girlfriend. Let me give you a little boo-boo kiss. <laughs> Kima does look legitimately exhausted. Come up with a suitable donor and we pay a lot less. Not with your pussy, but I fuck any one of these guys. What did you What did you just <laughs> No, you didn't just say So they're looking for a donor to have a baby. That's an interesting storyline. I like to think one of the characters we've met ends up being a donor. There's some weird scene where Kima has to just sit and watch one of the primary wirecast fuck her girlfriend. <laughs> Sergeant! Rolls. I don't mind Rolls, but the way he fucking demoted everyone is so brutal, I dislike him for that. Shows the body went in the water west of the bridge and drifted out. McNulty. <laughs> fucking Jimmy. I love McNulty. Still fucking with them. You gotta give the son of a bitch some credit for wit on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Cocksucker. That is fucking incredible. <laughs> That's like the best thing McNulty's done yet. Oh, you legend, McNulty. You fuck with them, please. I checked the stash, yo. We way low. More man taking our shit. Bloody hole. 
Yo, he said he held about 30 something, but I know that ain't right. Okay, so things are as normal. You know, I was worried the way this um, season started with press, and I was like, the fuck's he going Philly for or whatever? But he was obviously picking up a drop that was supposed to be in that car, and he's still ruling the terraces. So it's familiar ground. I don't know if he's still in the same terrace, but you know, he's still running an area for Stringer. And that's good because it means that, like, none of these guys are going to steal money, steal product, try and do some side shit because they were like, Stringer has like implemented that level of paranoia now in Preston that he could always be watching him when he's on an op so he better do shit to the fucking letter and that is how you make sure there's no mistakes So she is actually doing her job and inspecting the crates I thought she was maybe on the take she must have just been joking with that one dock worker Huh. Well, that shit ain't locked very well. Oh, this is this is creepy. What's in the back? Fucking hell! It's like a little maze of boxes. Oh shit, what the fuck is this about? Is this some serial killer shit? Well, good find by that cop. It's nice to see a cop actually doing their job and actually chasing people that, you know, aren't just trying to make money. They're the people you should worry about last. Chase the people, you know, killing girls and shit. Now the question is, who killed her? Oh fuck. You know what's fucked up about this? Something just like this happened in real life in Great Britain a few years ago. There was an Irish driver driving internationally who arrived in Great Britain. He was seen on CCTV camera opening up the back of the cargo on the lorry and like jump, jumping back and slamming the door shut again. People believe that was the point where he was supposed to let the immigrants off and swap into a new vehicle which would take them to their destination. But unfortunately, they'd all died of heat exhaustion or something like that in the back there was like a truck full of dead bodies you can read up about that it was fucked up okay and that was episode one of season two of the wire ebb tide and i will be back in just a minute with my thoughts on that so ebb tide what did i think of that well i don't know if this first episode was the thing that put people off this season but if it was i'm the opposite I love fresh creative shit. Again, I wouldn't be mad if the second season just started with, yo, we're reopening the case and we're getting everyone back in. We're reassembling the Avengers. That would be a dope season two. And if that happens in three or four or five, I'll love it. But the fact that they take a fresh, new, creative direction with this season while still implementing many of the primary cast from season one, I fucking love it. Focus on some different shit. Figure out a clever way to bring these characters back into it here and there and weave them in. It's dope. The docks are actually an interesting thing historically with crime. Uh, I mentioned it in one of the comments actually in my previous Wire videos, but I don't know if you guys know this. Lucky Luciano, one of the famous, famous mobsters, he started the International Crime Syndicate, which was basically the mafia trying to internationalize organized crime. If you imagine a UN of organized crime, Lucky Luciano foresaw that as the future of organized crime. It famously came to an end when there was a huge, huge, huge sting where many top, top leaders were meeting at a location and it was busted by the police. And after that, the International Crime Syndicate basically, basically fell apart because it was too risky to have all these leaders in conjunction with one another meeting. Because if a bust like that happened, you know, that's a lot of powerful people all going down at once. So I think since then they figured it was better to work in correspondence with one another, but to compartmentalize themselves. Thus, a single investigation can never take down the leaders of like 50 top crime syndicates. Lucky Luciano. I believe it was during the Second World War, had a deal with the government. It was called Operation Underworld. You can look into this. It was an op. And basically, Lucky Luciano, like, for the time of the war, the cops agreed to, like, I don't know, not arrest him or stop fucking with him and his people. 
as long as he and his people made sure that there was no spies coming in through the docks, no dodgy shit coming in through through the docks, you know, in a time of war. And I find that a, a fascinating story because, I mean, how many times in history can you point to something that's on record as the government going to the mafia like, look, time out, there's a world of war, we need your mafia-ness for a minute to protect our American docks. And Lucky Luciano was like, all right, cool. So when Lucky Luciano was finally arrested, I believe he got special treatment due to that help he had given the government in the war. And he was just extradited to Sicily rather than be sent to an American prison. He was allowed extradition, extradition, whatever the word does, back to Sicily where he remained for a long time, but then he st- he still wanted to run things in America. He started travelling to a sort of island. I forget where the island was. Was it Cuba? I think he started travelling to, where they would all meet, and then he started trying to get back in, and then he got in trouble for that. But yeah, he got a lot of special treatment just because of that deal he had with the government. So I've always found the docks and organised crime an interesting thing because there's a lot of shit that comes in through the docks. Think about it. Like, in Sopranos, Tony was making a lot of side money with the Russians shipping cars over through the docks. You know, they would steal them in Jersey, ship them via the docks they controlled, out, get the plates swapped and all of that shit, and they'd be sold abroad, and he would get a cut back. Again, like I said at the end of this episode, there's instances of, like, immigration happens through cargo containers and semi-trucks doing international travel all the time. Sometimes the drivers are in on it, sometimes the drivers are not even in on it. The people get loaded somewhere else, the driver just connects the fucking thing, does his drive, disconnects the thing and leaves, and then the people get out. But this is a lot of, um, a lot of illegal immigration happens this way. Sometimes it's riskier than others. Like in the case of what I would assume happened at the end of this episode, and in the case of what happened real life, the thing I, t- I said about a few years ago, I hope that's just not like a slaughterhouse of people who have been murdered by humans. I can only assume it is a botched immigration job and all these immigrants somehow died in the back of the container before they were able to be let off at the other side. That's my only guess. And if you remember earlier in the re- episode, they were like stressing about, about not being able to find the right container. Could that have been the thing that led to these people's deaths? Did they get the container lost for too long? The people ran out of oxygen in it? Something like that? I guess we're going to find out later on, but that would be my prediction. Earlier in the episode where they were unsure about the whereabouts of that container, that conversation they were having, I'm assuming that's the container. And uh, yeah, that is the result of not finding it in time, unfortunately. I had two favourite scenes, actually. My my first favourite scene was the conversation between Stringer Bell and whoever th- this contact is that, you know, he was trying to get the drugs off. That guy's representative. Two clearly very smart men from two different crime syndicates having a very intelligent conversation about where they are, where they're at with their suspicions and what they want to do going forward. I just loved it. So well written. And my favourite was uh, Rawls finding out that McNulty had fucked with the department and reattached that murder back up to their department as they were trying to get it sent to the place just south of the river. That was fucking hilarious. It was like a little fuck you from McNulty right to Rawls's face from his boat. And uh, that was great. And I, I even like the fact Rawls saw the funny side in it. Like, Rawls has got to respect that shit, do you know what I mean? So yeah, to be honest, I fucking really enjoyed episode one of season two, and I hope it continues in this vein, because I'm with this shit. I want to see where it all goes. I want to know why those um, people died in the back of that shipping container. I've got so many questions. I want to see McNulty finally take that fucking hat off his head and get a suit back on. So... Until next time, that has been my thoughts. If you have liked this video, click like. Subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more videos like this and ring the bell if you want to be notified as to when they drop. If there's anything you want to discuss from anything we just watched or anything you want to recommend I watch in the future or just shoot the shit, comment down below. And share this video around to anybody you think might appreciate this or might want to watch this series along with us. My Patreon link is in the description. If you become a patron, you get access to exclusive polls and posts. You get access to these videos I post on YouTube weeks and weeks in advance. And you also get access to full-length versions of all of my reactions. So you just sync up your copy of the show with my reaction, and then you can watch that shit along with me, and we can be chilling and watching The Wire as a fucking team. So consider becoming a patron. Link in the description. Helps me and the channel out so much. And until next time, I have been BA. 
Peace.